All right. Today, I want to thank God for this last Sunday in November. Please, if you don't mind, let's give the Lord a round of applause. In this service, we will be dancing out to our Thanksgiving offering. I want to specially prepare you for that session. Please, when it's time to dance out, I want to dance out rejoicing. Dance like someone who is grateful to God. Dance like somebody who knows that God has been on his side. Amen. And this is so important because one of the things I know God told me about this service is that he's going to watch out for the dancers. You know, I don't say God told me carelessly. If I tell you God said, he told me he's going to watch out for the dancers. So please make up your mind. It won't be long now. We'll soon enter the dance session. And he said to me, I'm going to watch out for it. And I'm announcing it to you the way he told me. I'm going to watch out for the dancers. This is not an attempt to manipulate. I could tell you I said it. If I tell you God said something, I don't say carelessly. All right? I want you to plan to dance. It's a plan. Uh -huh. Not the one that it's time for dancing. You say, eh, you know, you're, you know, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Not today. Not today. Say, tell the man, say, not today. Today's own is proper thanksgiving. Eh? You will dance. You will dance. I want those dance giving that used to do slow motion. Did you watch that? All manner of thanksgivers in church. That would do, they would go back again. I want all of that. Me, I want it. I didn't say God wants, but I want that for you today. I want you to dance like somebody who is grateful. Eh? Uh -huh. Today is going to be very powerful, and I would want to just share some things. It's going to be an anointing service. Let me give you a chance in case you were not updated about the fact to bring your ATM cards or anything that just represents your um, instrument of office, all right? Maybe your, your complimentary card or anything. I, I don't know. But that's how I'm led, all right? And I don't do that every day. So the day the Spirit of God says I should do it, I should not say because I don't do it, I will not do it. You understand? So it's not a doctrine. But once we are led, we are led. Praise God. That's the beauty. But the Bible says that those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons, not those that just think something is right or not. Mm -mm. So it's important. You know, one of the beautiful things about church is that when we come to church, we should learn more of God's ways. We should learn more of the ways of God. We, are, we already have a, an experience in the world. We learn from school. We learn from office. When we come to church, we should learn more of God. You agree with what I just said? We should understand God's ways better. The Bible says in Psalm 103 verse 7, it says that God showed his ways to Moses, but his acts to the children of Israel. There's something called the ways of God. In Isaiah 2 verse 2 to verse 3, even to 4, in verse 3 of that scripture, Isaiah 2, if you can bring it up, it's beautiful. It says that, let us go into the house of God that he may teach us his ways. There's such a thing called the ways of God. Look at your neighbor from third verse, there's a way of God. Say there's a way God does things. That guy sang it where he said, Now your way, now your way. Now. God has ways. Look at what he says. Let's look at what he says. And many people, let's start from verse 2, if you can be kind enough. Let's just get context to it. Isaiah chapter 2 from verse 2, and we'll read it down to 4. We're in the prophetic seasons of God. What God is doing now must be announced. He says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. Is that not today now? Are we not in the last days? Uh -huh. He says, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. That means as you have come here now, you are actually a nation. Yes. Are you not a chosen generation? A royal priesthood? A holy nation? Call to show for the, Look at it. Let's go on. Let's go on to verse 3. Verse 3 is where I'm going to. It says what? And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, that is to virtues, and to the house of the God of virtues. And he will teach us his ways. The ways of God are taught. And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. Did you see that? Lawmakers are here. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Why am I bringing this to your attention? Is to let you know that you may not have known the ways of God. God has ways. God has ways. And when God starts to do his ways, you should be knowledgeable enough to know how God does his ways. What are the ways of God? God, when he starts his ways, you should know. You should know. When God starts to tell you to do something, you should start to say, oh, but this thing is God, though. This thing is God, though. This thing is God. If you don't know, you will just be throwing away the ways of God. Who would have thought that the ways of God, for example, on the life of Elisha with his prophets was that he should pluck a, a, a branch and throw it inside water? How can you think that is the ways of God? Who would have thought that Jesus Christ would do potopoto with saliva and paste on somebody's eyes? 
If he does that to you now, would you say, Jesus, kai, 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 kai. If you no go heal me, just tell me. No, they do malam things for me. You know, you say, ah, how can Jesus be doing malam things for you? Oh, that was what he did, though. Some of us just think that it was just nice, nice to Jesus. No, the guy's situation required some vomiting. Oh, made a paste. Do you know how much saliva it takes to make a paste? And then put it on his eye. Now tell him, go and wash. Those are the ways of God. They are mysterious, sir. His paths have passed. They are past, past finding out. You are the one just thinking that you know what you are doing. You, do, you don't know what you are doing. When God moves you to the next level, you will go shock. Go shock. Many times, people just create an idea of God and stick to it. You are the one thinking that God, all God wants to do to you is just to make you a nice person. Who told you that? God of the Bible? Go and find out. God of the Bible? He has strange ways, sir. When he starts, you go shock. Who tells somebody that they are chasing? Go forward and part the Red Sea. Who, who does that? We are begging you for help. If you will help us, help us. If you don't go help us, let us know. He said, go forward. In fact, he told Moses, why are you asking me? He said, why are you asking me? He said, go forward, my friend. Ah, the ways of God. The ways of God. The ways of God. The ways of God. They are past finding out. They are past finding out. I want you to be, be interested in the way. So when you come to church, understand that one of the things you should get in a good church like virtues is the ways of God. To understand that God has ways. It's not just that like you just say, ah, it's my own, no, it's my own, no. It's not your own we are looking for. You came to church to learn the ways of God. When you live here, you should know something more that God can do. You should know something more how God does what he does. Do you get what I'm saying here? Yes. Because if you sit down there just thinking that, my God, he's good, oh, hey, he's good, oh, it's good, it's good. But you should find out the ways he is good. Uh -huh. There are ways by which he is good. God is not just good arbitrarily. There are things he will tell you to do. The ways of marriage, for example, how a woman will come and then a man meets and then joke, 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 they, they become a couple. It will shock you. It will shock you that God is behind many things you thought were ordinary. It will shock you. Some of them self the was. It's not the one cursing him, but he permitted it. And when he permits it, you come and meet him. God, they are fighting. He said, ah, ah, <laughs> they are telling me. Lord, they are fighting. He said, I'm aware. You are the one thinking he's not aware that if he was aware, he would stop the war. Some of the people fighting themselves now, God is fighting them because of you. You don't know. They are angry and God is behind you. Just, just set them up. The ways of God. What I want you to see is that the ways of God are spiritual. They are deep. And when you come to God's house, you should find out. For example, how does God do blessing? How does he bless a man? How does God bless a man? You see that it will look like God is partial with some people which will lead me to the discussion of today. For example, some people see what will happen in the future in a dream before other people. That's the way of God. That's the way of God. You say, ah, nah, yeah, yeah. The way of God is that he says, draw nigh to me, I will draw nigh to you. You think you are clever. If you do like this, Peter, I'll do like this. If you do like this, Peter, I'll do like this. That's what he said. Then you do like this, Peter, like, I'll do like this. You, because some of us just think that God is just looking for you desperately. I can tell you why God is looking for you is for your purpose, sir. So that he can make your purpose line with his purpose. There's a purpose why you are here. But if you say no, there's nothing he can do. If God says to this man, marry this woman, and this woman says she's not marrying him, there's nothing God will do. He will go their ways and nothing will, nobody will die. Nobody will go to hell. The ways of God are not in isolation. They depend on man's cooperation. They need man to cooperate. They are not just there. That man must cooperate with God. That's why today I want to speak about what I titled the anointing for favor. The anointing for there's such a thing called the anointing for favor. The ways of God are not just with God. That's why that scripture is very important. It says, and Jesus had favor with God and with man. With God. Let's look at scriptures today. Are you ready this morning? Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Put up your right hand and prophesy. Just begin to speak in the Holy Ghost. Can you do that powerfully? The one was you, even on your own life again, you can't pray. <laughs> pray, pray. Hallelujah. Pray, 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 pray. <laughs> Amen. Can we just pray a little? Just a little. Hallelujah. Just a little. Pray in the Holy Ghost just a little.
Just a little longer. Hagodo sefrini mataba kadibo shalabataria. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Father, as we go into your word, let your word go into us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's start with scriptures today with Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. We're going to do some Bible reading. Please, I'd like you to mark them down and use them to guide yourself after this session. Remind that Project Impact, if you, if you want to volunteer for Project Impact, kindly please oblige yourself to you know, see um, Minister Dami uh, Moshidosi or Mama herself after the service want to have a great time in this project impact by the grace of God. All right? And at the end of the year, we're going to have a very special Thanksgiving service. That's the last Thanksgiving service in the month of December. I want us to please buy something for the house of God. Buy. Just buy some. It might be a frame. It might be a chair. It might be a printer. It might be paper for printer. You see? Just, I just wanted to show your gratitude to God. Just do something. And, you know, bring it to the house of God. Somebody brought Thanksgiving chicken last week. Or more. That chicken was very powerful. It was a new one. But I'm not asking you to bring chicken for Thanksgiving for God. It's me that we eat that one. No. All right. <laughs> but if you bring something for the house, I want you to bring something to the house of God. Is that okay, please? Just as you are walking past, just say, ah, this flower go find for God's house. Buy flower. You know? Something like that. Is that okay, please? I just I don't want to forget that. So if you have a commitment towards that, then I want you to please join Twitter. Amen. I want you to follow me on Twitter. Is that okay? That's X like they call it now. It used to be Twitter, now X. No? Um, yeah. So I want you to follow me on that if you can. If you are not following, I will urge you to do so. Um, yes, you should be following if you are really there. And anywhere you hear me speak, I would like you to please follow. We're on radio every Monday morning, um, Inspiration FM 92.3. And you can tune in very early in the morning, 540 for corporate people. Um, yes, there's a different conversation going on there on radio. And we're also on radio in Newcastle, United Kingdom. Very good to know that so much is going on. Be part of it. Find yourself in the growth of this church. You know we are regrowing, if you know what, what's happening. We are starting something strong all over. And I can tell you it's going to grow. Can I hear your amen on that? It's going to grow so massive, so large, so big, that you will know that God was with us all along. I don't want you to start to tell, tell people that I used to know that man, oh God, you don't know me, oh, amen? If you don't know me now, you don't know me. Let me just disown you now from time so that you can enter into the disowning. But from now, if you serve, I will know you too because the work is bigger than what one person can do. You understand? It's not a work to sleep on. There's so much to be done in God's house. You know, some of us are more excited about the activities without also participating and engaging. Were you excited about yesterday's conference? It was a beautiful one. Let's give the Lord a round of applause one more time. And I appreciate God for it. It was beautiful. It was beautiful for many reasons. One of it is that she honored this house. Yes, very important. Some of you will be doing great things without honoring the house. And you want honor to come back. It won't come back. It won't come back. It's just Oha. She honored this house. It was very good. Very good. I want to urge you to do big things. Don't just hear these teachings and not do anything about it. Okay? Find a way to do something. I mean, when did she join the church? I woke up one morning and said she needs to do something. What are you going to do? She told you she didn't have the money. It's not money. I keep telling you, if you put money as your first thing in budget, you will not succeed. Money always tells you I'm not available. It is vision that makes money come. It's called provision. Provision. If there's no vision, nothing will follow. Brother, if you want to marry, I promise you money will come if you really want to marry. If you don't set out to do something meaningful, life will not assist you. Are you listening to what I'm saying, please? This is very important. Very important. And God is faithful. If you are a doer, do things. If you have doings, do them. Huh? Start your own. It might be a concert. Do something. If you don't engage these teachings, they will not make sense to you. These teachings I preach, oh, it's not for everybody. It's for people who are connected to the society to do things. So don't just think I'm just preaching. I'm not just one of those preachers preaching nice things. The purpose of coming to church is not to make you more morally uh, upright. No, that's not the purpose. God has already planted the spirit of holiness in you. All right? The purpose of coming to church is to learn the ways of God so that you can do exploits on earth. Exploits. Exploits. Young girl, just finished NYC. It's gathering adults, gathering people. 
But there are nothing for pain. You too can do something. And you say you're copying a copy her. Now from copy, copy, will they become copyright? Start from somewhere. You understand? Do something and see if people will not support you. That the one just thinking nobody cares. It's because you are thinking that this is the only way to succeed. If I buy and sell, yeah. nobody, that's, that's why you are feeling like you are not succeeding. That now only this way go succeed. And it's not true. I did this type of things many years back. Almost every month, Mama used to come for them. I will leave Ibadan, come to Lagos, sweet sensation, then rent hall, you know, buy food for everybody. For everybody, you must eat something and drink something. Don't say you came to my meeting without eating and drink. Without, there was a day I got there, they said the hall is not available. I said it's not possible. They said the person I approve is at Redemption Car. I said, call her. I said, call her. They said, we can't call her. I said, call her. Tell her that this person wants to talk to her. His audacity, his vision, his vision. The woman was at my birthday, my 40th birthday, to help me organize the cutting of cake. The same woman that said it was not possible. I said, man, we have to use this hall for Jesus. We have to use this hall for Jesus. We have to, <laughs> mama, you remember that day? Mama came in. We have to use this hall for Jesus. And I've done that almost every other month. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? I don't know how you are spending your own youth. Oh. I'm not saying you should spend it like me. But make sure you are investing it into something meaningful. You're not doing anything. No, you can't look back and thank God that you did something for God. Do something. Do something. Help me tell them. I say, do something. You know, I realized before I go into my teaching that Acts 10. Let me say this one. That not everybody is normal. Sure, you know. Not every, do you know that not everybody is normal? I tell you why. You know that some people, eh, if normal human being, I want to ask you a question. Everybody, please, if you are with me, say amen, please. I beg, tell me what is the normal response of a human being. If you put your hand on top of fire, what should happen? It should burn you, right? When it burns you, what should happen? You should remove your hand, right? Yes. Now, I can tell you there are people that they have put their hand on top of fire and it's burning them and they are not removing their hand. You know what's going on there? They are numbing their pain. They are adjusting to suffering. They are going through what life was supposed to use to prompt them to remove their hand. But they are not responding. They are, they are supposed to, yeah, it's hot. God put you through hot situations. Instead of it to make you jump out of it towards God, you are adjusting to the pain. You are not able to come out and say, it's time for me to go to the next level. They, like a frog inside the pot. Instead, you know, if you put a frog into hot water, it will jump out. But if you boil the frog gradually, it will be deceiving itself that this is the normal temperature. It will be adjusting. Some of you, God has put you under pressure, but you are not responding to pressure. What God thought, quote and unquote, that should make you respond towards him, you are not responding the correct way. The pain you have been going through was supposed to make you more dedicated to life. Instead, you are adjusting to the pain. What should make you go into prayer? You are adjusting to it like as if, be, 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 be. No. God was hoping that that problem should make you respond to him. And if you, for a long time, continue like that, you will keep adjusting like a frog. Keep adjusting, keep adjusting. For example, some days come that what God wanted to do was, you know this thing, eh? if you don't get angry, you will not overcome. If you are not angry, you continue to accommodate it. What you tolerate, you will accommodate. If you keep saying, ah, it's like that, that's how we are, you will never get angry that this situation must stop. It will continue. That headache doing you will continue. That not having money will continue until you get angry. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. The day you get angry is the day victory starts. It starts, I'm angry, no more will this continue. That reaction was what God was hoping for. That you will get angry. One day like that, I told mama, I said, nobody can be insulting my wife like this. Please resign. That resignation was resigning into destiny. We did not know. We could have continued to adjust. Let's just continue to manage. Just continue to manage. You know, we don't know where to get food from. Just continue to manage. You see, just continue to manage. Whereas God was counting on this anger to make you enter destiny. He made people provoke you so that you can respond to him. But you know respond. So the responses of your life is important. It's important. The response of your life is important. Whatever you are going through, how you respond matters. Whatever challenge you are going through, how you respond matters. Please, I, is somebody hear what I'm saying here then? God is counting on how you respond. I say, no, I don't want this fire. Uh -huh. But some of us were just then, ah, it is sweet, oh. Maybe this is how other people are going through fire too. We don't come and know what everybody is going through. That's how some people are adjusting in their marriages. You are going through tough time. Somebody is bruising you, bows, bass, big, 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 bah. And you are saying, no, maybe that's what everybody is going through. After all, nobody is telling us about their own. 
you are suffering instead of responding properly. Some of us, you respond small. You withdraw from the response. God was trying to bring you closer. God was trying, after a while, you take two steps forward, three steps backward. Two steps forward, 17 steps backward. You come today, you go tomorrow. How do you think rice will boil by removing it from fire every time? You can't boil rice if you don't put it on fire for a straight time. Please, do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Please, uh, it's important programs. Help me administer those that may be dozing off. Put them somewhere in the back so that they don't enter our camera. You know, please just locate them. They should respectfully go back because some people come to sleep in church. Um, as I, you will be surprised. Some people prefer sleep in church because of the comfort. So just encourage them. Get, let them get up and then let them go back to sleep if they must continue sleeping. Maybe they had a long shift. All right? Um, but please don't let them enter our camera that way. Thank you. All right, so... Let's continue the discussion today. In Acts 10 34, let's look at it. People of God, let's read together. One, two, go. Can we try this together? Are you ready? It's on the screen. One, two, let's do this on time. One, two, go. So Peter tells us an attribute of God that God does not respect person. Another way to put this as in efficiency says God is not partial. God does not look at faces to do things. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? What God does for one, he can do for all. If God has, has a record of doing it, he will do for anybody. He says, and in every nation, he that feared him and walked in righteousness is acceptable to him. God does not do partiality. God is a courageous God enough to confront anyone. If there's anything God does, it is for a reason. The God of the Bible is a just God. Say that after me. Say the God of the Bible is a just God. I want us to say it properly. Say the God of the Bible is a just God. God is a just God. He, is, he owes this world fairness. He owes this world fairness. He cannot afford to be unjust. Our God is a just God. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4. Quickly, please. I just want to share these things with us quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4, and Job chapter 4, verse 17. These scriptures try to point to the fact that God is a just God. Please, if you can come up on time, help me so that I know what I'm doing here. All right. Yeah, let's go. Good. Let's read it. Everybody, one, two, go. Look at what it says. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, you may be thinking that you deserve more in life. The just God gave you what you deserve. Yeah. Oh, yes. I, I'm deserving. Like, oh, God, keep quiet. He's a just God. Let me tell you something. If you don't get what you deserve, he will be unjust. Uh -huh. It makes him unjust if life is not well distributed. So God is carefully distributing to everybody what they get. He cannot be unjust. Look at it. Isaiah chapter 45. Please follow me in this discussion. I want to teach and preach. Isaiah 45 verse 21. Isaiah 45 verse 21. Can you quickly help me with time and speed, please? I want to cover some ground. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's read it together. Look how it says. Amen. Can we go together, everybody? One more time. Let's go. Tell ye, bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who are declared this from ancient time? Who are told it from that time? Have not I, the Lord, and there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior, there is none beside me. That's him talking about himself. I'm a God prides himself in his justice. He is a just God. He must do right. Abraham asked him, shall the judge of the earth not do right? God owes himself the duty of doing right. So when you go through life, let it settle in your heart that God is just. Let it settle in your heart that God will make sure that you don't get more than you can handle or in trouble or in pleasure. He will not allow it to happen. The Bible says, for God is faithful. Who will not allow us to be tempted more than we are able to bear. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. So the God of the Bible is a just God. He must be just. I don't like the family I was born to. He was just. He put you there. I don't like the school I went to. It was just, it put you there. Whatever life has served you as cards to play in life are the things you can handle. Please, are you listening to what I'm saying here? 
it depends now. So, for example, let's use the game of life. You're having some cards with you. You have, no matter the kind of cards you have, if you don't know how to lay them down, one after the other, you can lose the game. Yeah. If they gave you, if you, they selected all the general market, pick two, pick five, everything for you. If you don't know how to lay them down one by one, you can still lose. Please, if you know what I'm saying, because uh, uh, you went and they look like, be like, say, Pastor, they play what's personal. So, you know, it, no matter what, even in Ludo, at least Ludo, people should know Ludo. If you don't know how to use your triple six, you can still lose. <clears throat> yes. If you count the wrong thing, instead of releasing the right thing, you, you, you will still lose. What am I trying to say? Although God is responsible for what comes to you, you are responsible for how you use it. Did you get that? Yes. So, life plays you triple six. You know, some people even used to do like it just triple six, triple six, and two, three to come triple six, triple six, triple six, four, six, 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 six. But they can play rubbish and lose. Do you know what I'm saying here? So, it is not what life gives you, but how you use it that matters. Now, where I'm going to is this God will always be just, He will give everybody His own chance. He, he owes the duty of priding Himself that I'm a just God. So, He must do right. By all standards, look at that Job scripture that I quoted earlier on. Job chapter, what's that? Um, Job chapter 4 verse 17. Yes, take a look at it. Job 4 17. Please, just let's read that and then we proceed. So God is a God who must do right. And I want to show you that, look how it says. Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? In other words, you and I know how we put standard on being fair. Something happens, we say, no, 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 no. He says, can you be better than God at it? No, we can't. God is just. God is just. God is fair. There is no partiality with him. You must understand that the death of your parents was not God's fault. You must understand that the problems you are going through now is not God's pain. God is just. God must have done everything possible to communicate to that person who died in that accident. But it is not just here. You can't be blaming God because you are ignorant. The God of the Bible is a just God. The God of our fathers is a just God. He owes a duty of being fair and it will always be so. Let me hear your amen on that. He's a just God. You must settle that in your spirit, people. You must accept it that God is good and just. So what he gives to one, he's not giving to one because he's partial. What the beautiful girl has, she lacks in character. What the character girl has, she lacks in beauty. What the rich child has, he lacks in discipline. What the discipline has, he lacks in riches. For adventure, it is for trans, trans, um, uh, some exchange, transactional exchange. That when the disciplined boy meets the rich boy, they can exchange their work together. So check which divide you are on. God is just, sir. I need to settle that because someone is arguing that it's 2023, almost wrapping up, and God has not done something for you. It's not God's fault. Yes, sir. Do you know how you treated the last person God sent to you? You are now shouting, oh God, oh God, how are you? Will you keep quiet? Check it out. God is just. He is fair and constantly so. And don't you think it's because I have everything right myself? We must understand it. He's a good God. 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 Somebody say glory. This is very important. Very important. In our subconscious, we must think that way. Not that when life does you something, say, oh God, oh God. What is oh God? Will you wake up and check the resource in that place? If you are not resourceful, it's not God's fault. Somebody put your hand on your head and say, Lord, open my eyes. Open my spirit. Open my eyes to see the reality of what you have given to me. Make it a 60 seconds prayer. Let me hear you pray. Open my eyes, oh God. God is a good God. 60 seconds prayer. Lord, open my eyes to see. They soon ready to fake it till he has to. Thank you, Father. 
In Jesus' precious name, we prayed. Please take your seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. In, in the book of 1 Samuel, let's go there. I want to share with you some thoughts. This is so important. You might have come from anywhere. It doesn't matter. God owes this world injustice. He must be just. He must be fair. He knows what to do. God of the Bible. Is, is, is except you don't know him. God. He will never give Satan a chance to accuse him of being unjust. In fact, the Bible says God will not be unrighteous to forget. So forgetfulness can be injustice on God's side. So he's consciously working with the memory of your actions. Consciously. Making sure every man gets according to his work. Making sure nobody gets more than he deserves. Don't be deceived. He's in charge, yet he relaxes on the charge. What a God. I used to see, people just used to think the God that they just imagine is God. It's not your imagination that is God. Though. If you don't know God, you don't know God. God is not up to making you morally upright. Just be nice. Be nice. Ooh, 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 what was that? Even people that he doesn't want to know are upright. Come on. Better learn the ways of God and understand. See what it says. Where, where are we? That's First Samuel chapter 2, please. Please hurry up. I, I have some thoughts I want to land, and I'm just on number two out of heaven. Please hurry up. Is it coming up? Okay, first Samuel chapter 2. Verse, um, okay, verse um, 26. 26. Sorry. 26. I want to show you something. Please follow. Follow. I'm trying to deliver something here. Let's read together. Is that okay, everybody? We're going now to verse 33. Watch this. Everybody, watch this quickly. Can we do this together? All right, let's go. One, two, go. Everybody, let's make it a beautiful read. One, two, go. And the child grew, Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. You know that they said that about Jesus Christ also in Luke chapter 2 verse 52. The same story that he was in favor with the Lord. May you have favor with the Lord. May you have favor with men. Now, if God is always just, what makes some people have favor with him and some others don't? What makes God give some people favor and others not? I will show you shortly. Are you ready for this this morning? Let's go on. Let's go on. Want to go? Let's go on to verse 33. Want to go? And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus here the Lord, did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? Let's read on. And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? That means he was talking about Aaron. Aaron was Eli's um, father here. Let's look at He said, wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice? This is God angry. Why are you kicking at my sacrifice and at my offering? You are kicking against it. Look at what God is reacting to here. Which I have commanded in my habitation and honorest thy sons above me. You see why I'm strong on my children? You don't honor your children above God. God gave you children. You are honoring them more than him that gave you. See God's reaction. He's the one asking questions. See, no, oh, no, my child, my child, more than God. My baby did not allow me to come to church. What is, what a testimony. What a, what a, what a word. I went to take care of my child. My, you see, I don't know who will take care of the children. God, I gave you children. Continue. Continue. To make yourself fat with the chiefest of all thy offerings of Israel, my people. See, God thinking about his people. Look at Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, he's changing his mind. Why? Because he put his children above him. I want to see, show you that God favored Aaron, which was his father. But he said, I'm no longer doing. But look at what he now said. He told him the principle underlining it. Please, are you listening to what I'm saying here? Please, if you are sleeping, be respectful of yourself. Get up and go to the back. I don't want your face to be killing my spirit. All right? I'm talking deep things here so that I don't, angel will not pass you by. All right, look at it. Please, if you have to sleep, my brother, if you have to sleep, you can stand up. It's more honorable, okay? Yeah, let's look at it. Let's, let's go on. Yeah, are you there? Wherefore the Lord God of Israel, where, where, where am I? Say, what? Uh, for, say what? Be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Listen to me. I've said it before in this ministry. 
If people lightly esteem you, it's because you're not honoring God. I say it with confidence. No man honors God in secret and in public that God allows people lightly esteem. I am, the people will not know how they are compelled to adjust their behavior towards you. I'm telling you, they will law at him. Them that honor me, go back to that verse, that verse, stay verse 30, 30, let's so that we can proceed. Because it, it's a deeper way, you cannot read the rest at home. And they that despise me will be light, shall be lightly esteemed. They will count you of no substance in public. When you appear, shift this way, or you're on a line, they come, oh, everybody, they left everybody, come to you. From here, yeah. go home. Ah! And you have been there since nine o'clock. You say nothing happened. That, those people are crazy people. God is showing you your level of honor for him. They don't do that to some of us. They say, sir, please, you can stand outside, please. All of you go home. Sir? Kaka, if you like, don't go home now. Are you follow us, sir? They will exempt you. It's called favor. It's called favor. It has reason. Is that you highly esteem him. You honor him. They don't talk. When you honor God, eh, listen to me, there's a way you will talk to men. He that can stand before God will know how to talk to, to men. But when you lightly esteem your presence of God, it doesn't matter. They say we should say, I can't keep myself. You know, everything is just nice. You say we should dance. I'll just do what I can dance. That's how these pastors used to talk. They don't really mean what they are saying. <laughs> you play. You will learn. They will just, you will think it's a joke. They will just come to your front. From here, you go see. You try not honoring God. You will, you will think it's because I said it happened. These angels don't forget. They will come and remind you that pastor said it. They will just come from here. Go home. You'll be like, why? you feel victimized. Then the angel will remind you. You remember pastor's message. I'm telling you, I've tested it for over 30 years. I can tell you. Now correct. People that don't have any reason to help you will help you when you honor God. They don't know why. Oh. They don't know why. I promise you, they will tell you, I don't even know why I'm doing what I'm doing. My normal mood, I will not do what I'm doing. Huh? But when you honor, even you will know that it is called favor on your side. One day like that, there was one lousy traffic on this express road. As we're going, some people just suddenly broke blockade there. We're going for a function. You know, so people say following one way. You know how one way can be legit sometimes. That FRSC is the one telling you follow here. So we just started following, we started going. As we just got there, the car was not maybe something very big or something because the next car behind us was very powerful too. As we passed, the man said, Nobody is passing here. Close the door. Close it. Doesn't care anybody coming. Listen, those things, eh? That look more difficult. God will open door for you. Because of this, your secret attitude of honoring him. <laughs> God changed his mind over a priestly lineage oh, that he swore that this lineage will never, this is a lie. This is the, he said, but now I change my mind. <laughs> they play. Continue. It doesn't matter. He knows what he's doing. When God does a button, you will ask, oh God, I thought you do not change. Continue. He said, but now, the Lord said, I mean, this now I'm talking. Be far from me that I keep that word to you. I'm not the one that said it now. See, be far. I never said it again. I'm telling you that one of the things you can do to secure the favor of God constantly is to learn to honor God constantly. Oh God, when you come to church, it's not because you, they're, they're, you're waiting for people to call you, you did not come to church. No, uh, you, you are still on mama. When you go in this, in this life, eh, you will understand why some people used to go to jazz room. When life reaches you at some point, you will know that you need solution. Otherwise, shame will overwhelm you. I you know shame can be worse than death sometimes. I, I'm telling you this thing now. You see me using white brother to preach to you. You think I'm playing. Uh, you, you better know how to... Some of us in our dressing... To wear your best shoe, you say you won't wear to church. He said God should give you his best shoe. To come to church well dressed, you say, No, I'm going to keep it for that party. God that provided money for you. 
I'm showing you every day misbehavior that makes God not favor people. You see a pastor preaching. You say, oh, these pastors, they are talking about pastors, you to put mouth. Your contribution had no advantage, oh. Your contribution had nothing to render. God said, you to you talk, mark up. Mark up. Angel could just pass. Marked. You know those angels they are looking for? You say, marked. <laughs> marked. When anything is coming, like you just carry you away from it. You should go serve these people food. Sometimes, when they don't serve you on time in party, they want to show you how small you are. You will say, Auntie me your If you like, we argue with me. You can be thinking I'm joking, but I'm telling you this is everyday misbehavior of people. Your boyfriend is abusing your pastor, and you think it's not anything. He just was expressing himself. Every day, you will wonder, I'm praying, but it's not happening. Hear my voice. I'm preaching to you this morning. But you saw I remove my cap. Yes, sir. I need to communicate to you that there is a value you are missing out. God is not partial. When he favors one, he has his reasons. Somebody is here. Your mother is praying for you. The other person, your friend, nobody is praying for him. He's talking like you. Nobody has mentioned his name. Today, end, end of the month, the mother came out, brought thanksgiving. You say, Lord, bless my son. You, nobody's thanking God for you. Nobody remembers you. You are talking like as if everybody is equal. You will soon introduce yourself to problem. Don't worry. See, 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 how, see how people are, are making vulgar mistakes. Vulgar mistakes. Vulgar mistakes. Well, okay, as I'm preaching now, you are still thinking if it is God talking to you or not. You see how your heart is hardened. Stop on you, coconut head. You need to wake up and see that God is trying to advise us on some simple, simple, everyday misbehavings. Everyday misbehavings. Everyday misbehavings. When you have challenges, maybe you have to pay a bill. It's tight that must suffer. It's tight. We will not pay tight this month so that we can accommodate the bill. Like as if God is the one that brought the bill. Who used the light? Who brought the money? He said, no, no, uh, tight, tight cannot happen this month. You see, God understands. And he does. And he does. You are still his child. But one more, child gets level. When they bring toy for some children and the other ones are looking and say, Daddy, you not buy our own. Buy our money. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm say, saying it like I'm laughing, but I'm not laughing. I'm very serious. Every other saloon is your own head they did wrongly. You'll be wondering why you did not once wear home wear. Why is it my own? You're not, you, God is trying to tell you, you have lightly esteemed me. You have light, nobody carries God high. Eh? And they will lightly esteem in the public. It's not possible. It can't, if they do it, they will apologize when they discover. Some people just tell them, stop this thing you are doing. It has happened to me too many times. Too many times. Without introducing myself as a man of God. Just show up. That you are welcome, sir. Please, this way. It's too many. I know that it's not because I'm good looking. I'm a good looking. Don't want that. You need to know that honor is what you need on your life. Honor. God will strongly esteem you. Strongly. That's what I was saying yesterday. That this young lady was smart. She honored God's servants. She honored God's people. I, do you think it's ordinary? She didn't have to. It's my program. It's not church issue. It's not church issue. Don't worry. Continue. The way you honor the things of God, God will honor you as such. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Can we continue this discussion? Let me see if I can take two more, please. Somebody say glory. So I start with that to say that God is very interested in granting favor. And I just showed you one of the access to favor now, which is how you honor God. How you honor God. Don't look at your MD because you know his color and speak to him anyhow. If he represents God, please honor him like though God were there. Don't be someone who is funny or phony. They say, no, 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 no. How, how much older is he than me? Is it about age? Ancient of days. No, 
about it. For no. Let's come to God's house. I beg, I can't kill myself. God, I have to go to work. Don't worry. I promise you. What you left undone, God will send somebody else to replace you. There are people in this ministry that I saw some of them go. Their replacement was better than those ones that left. But your law at him. God, when he will replace you, he will replace you with somebody better. You will see that person and you will be jealous. Some of us, some of us, you left a sister. You felt she will fail. When you saw the brother, even you said, ah, ah. We know that you were going to lay. You're talking like as if you are the final grand square. <laughs> See, calm down. There's nothing you are doing that life has not done. Just calm down. There's no fine you are finding that life has not fine pass. There's no money you want to have that life has not had. I, are you getting what I'm saying here? Every day misbehaving. I want to dwell, I mean, I've dwelt on it already, but I want you to go and think about that properly. So, there is a principle. Honor. How do we access God's favor? Honor is one of the ways. Honor God. Let your heart, when they say God, be high. Let it not do you quickly, quickly, quickly to, to scramble away from a message on Facebook. You understand? Now, you have to shut some down. You have to go forward. You have to... Uh, but don't just do like as if I don't hear a message. That's what I'm addressing. That spirit that is making you feel like as if anything God, you don't understand. Just move. No. No. I need to teach you these things. It says that those that I will honor and them that despise me, I will lightly esteem. May God not lightly esteem you in Jesus' name. So we assess the favor of God by honor. Now, you remember I said that last time. Please, do you remember I taught this the last two weeks, um, the first message, where I said honor, um, value, and prayers are the ways to secure favor. Remember I said so? I also shared on Wednesday about how favor can be gotten because it is given. Some of us, you need to ask for favors. Because, like I said, favor is not only from God. Favor is also from man. You can ask God for favor. You can ask man for favor. If it's only God you want to favor you, it might be that you are setting yourself up for pride. Let men also be involved in your life. Some of us don't like saying thank you, and God wants you to learn it. Ask people. You just want only God will give you money from your... It's not like that. God has to touch somebody, send you money, sir. You get what I'm saying here? Uh -huh. And you will know that what that person is doing for you may not be what you deserve. Somebody say Glory. Say it again. Say glory. glory. So, I want you to take note of that. That honor is one. And then I want to share with you, like I said earlier on, ask where you need it. Let me tell you, say ask and you shall receive. Tell your neighbor properly. Say ask and you shall receive. Very important. So that's what I call solicited favor. Then I went on to talk about favor that comes because of a purpose. Like in the case of Esther, the Bible says that um, Mordecai challenged and said in Esther chapter 4 verse 14, he said, who knows whether it was for such a time as this? Who knows whether it was for such a time as this? So there's such a time as this where couples had favored you, placed you strategically somewhere. Maybe you came the HOD of a department. God expects that that HOD ship that you have to favor his righteous cause. Are you listening to what I'm saying, please? In Psalm 35, verse 27, the word of God says, let them shout for joy and be glad. Hallelujah. That's a good place to shout. <laughs> Amen. Let me say one more time. I said, let them shout for joy and be glad. Glory to God. Psalm 35, verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad. It says, them that favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, the Lord be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his people. Psalm 35 verse said, look at it. Let them shout for joy and be glad. That favor my righteous cause. So what that is saying is that when you are the one favoring God's house, God favors you. 
He says, God has pleasure in your prosperity. God has a stake in your prosperity. God is concerned about how you will prosper because you favor his righteous cause. Hmm. Some of us were in you know, organizations and then they placed you as a head or something and there's no favoring of God's cause in that discussion. I'm not saying you should become bilaterally religious or something. No, I'm saying there should be a way that the cause of God is favored there. There should be some justice in that system. There should be some consideration for others. Are you listening to what I'm saying, please? This is very important. That you can also secure the favor of God by the purpose that you stand for, by the righteous cause you stand for. Today, I want to try to bring it in to mention the purpose of favor. Let's quickly write this down. Why should we be favored? Why should we be favored? We are favored because it takes favor to make sense of destiny. Life is hard. Favor makes it easy. Life is hard. Favor makes it easy. By favor, number two, because of favor, we don't lose battles. Favor makes you always win battles and win wars. Please don't sleep on me. Are you still there, please? Number three, favor makes you stand out. Number four, favor makes sure you are never stranded. Similarly, favor makes, us, makes all things work together for our good. Number next, favor makes you the chosen. And finally, favor restores your soul. Favor restores your soul. Now, I wrote here, the things a favored man should not do. Things that make favor leak. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Things that make favor leak. A favored man, what can make a favored man now become disfavored? All right? Number one, pride. Pride has always gone before a fall. When people fall, check out. Pride is maybe around the corner. Not always, but maybe around the corner. Pride. What is pride? The belief that you know it all. The attitude you don't need help. Really, what you mean is that you don't want to say thank you to anybody. Right. It comes in different shades and shadows. Check yourself for proud. Pride, I mean. <clears throat> Number two is ingratitude. Ingratitude. A man that is not grateful will make all his favor leak out. Please listen to what I'm telling you. You know, some of us, you've never trained yourself in the school of attention. So anytime anybody's talking to you, you are not able to listen. You're not able, you have to listen. You have to listen. You know? It will surprise you. Some of us grew up without anybody advising us at home. You were a lot to yourself. You grew up like that. And you want to continue growing like that. And God is trying to caution you. That you do not have parents. Does not mean God is not your parents? You are in his house now and he's talking to you. Would you listen? Important. Please listen. Please listen. I say that respectfully. All right? So, favor. Ingratitude will make favor leak. Ingratitude. The proof of a grateful man is a thankful man. You will always be thank you will always see the good in the situation. There's no light. Thank God there's light. You see how is your choice. There's no light. Everything is waga waga. Everything. Thank God there's life. A grateful man expresses it in thanksgiving. You can be thankful but not grateful. But you can't be grateful and not thankful. Check it well. Go and think about it. Gratitude is of the heart. And I want to urge you <clears throat> to perpetually live in gratitude. You know some people continue to look out for what they don't have. You look at your relationship, you wish that you are, that relationship you are in, somebody else is the one you are dating. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Something happened to me the other day. I wanted to plug the wire of the internet 
I was plugging the wire of um, DSTV or something, and I was expecting the internet to on. It won't on. You take another wire because it's in front of you. It does not mean it's what you are plugging. And I thought about it. How true. Some people are dating another person with another person with them. Like, so when they complain, the person they are complaining about is not the person here, but the, their imagination. I'm telling you, they are dating somebody else. Why right? they are there? So they, they are talking to this one's body, but the real person they are describing is somebody else. You know? Just like how some sisters wish that they are a different size. This is your size. But you are dreaming of being somebody's size. Oh, guy, I know that somebody. Buy your size. <laughs> Buy your size. That's how it is. You'll be surprised how some people are in this church and they wish it's another church. Instead of you to be grateful that we are here. Some people, as far as they even think, they even wish that their father is another person. I'm telling you. Gratitude is deep from the heart. I'm grateful for my general. I went for covenants, covenants matriculation the other day. You will see all sizes and shades of celebration. Some, you will see the parents in their own little way, they stand and snap. Because it's Lord. And now one, He's walking on his own. Nobody came for him. And that one, parents are eating rice. Everybody is eating rice. And that one even brought a um, music jukebox. Thank God for your own. Thank God for your own. If you don't understand it, the next thing God has in mind for you will not come. Some people have children. They are not grateful for their child. This child is always a devilish child. This child is always a devilish Continue. Thank God for your own. Yours is what God gave you. Don't forget I told you he's a just God. A just God. You will not marry a better wife than you will marry. But when you marry that wife, thank God for that wife. Okay, you were not having everything right. No problem. Thank God for your own. What is your own? Some people can't thank God for their own hair. Their own eyes. Their own shape. In gratitude, I have come to confront that spirit today. We must be grateful for what God is doing for us. You know, I can come now and say, ah, this by now, I should have fit this whole place for us. Oh God, thank God for your own. Thank God for your own. Not fake thank God, though. Genuine. Genuine. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. It was never about the people that he will give me. It's about him that called me. Thank God for your own. And this is such a very... God looks upon such people and favors them. The grateful. The grateful. Can I hear your amen on that? Amen. Let me give you two more and then we go into the anointing session. Next thing I want to draw your attention to that can help you get the favor of God is what I called the... I describe it here as um, the reward for your goodness. Reward. When you do something right, are you listening to what I'm saying? God favors it. When you do something right, God favors it. Now, let me start with two examples. When you give to God, listen to me. Please bring up the scripture. 2 Corinthians 9.8. <coughs> Excuse me, please. KJV. You know, it says, when you give to God, God loves cheerful givers. So, God does not just love givers. He loves cheerful givers. Please, do you know what I'm talking about? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to, to 8. Please hurry up if you can. Please. Eh? Please. Please. Yeah, thank you. See what it says. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly. So he's talking about giving, generosity. All right? He says, shall reap also sparingly. Please, do you understand that statement here? So God will not give you more than you sown. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now look how it says, verse 7 and 8. Watch this. He said what? Every man, according as he proposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. Why? For God loves a cheerful giver. 
God loves everybody, isn't it true? God is love. But he loves cheerful givers separately. To be favored means to be loved differently. When you give what everybody gives, you get what everybody gets. But when you give something special, God is unjust not to give you special. Do you understand what I just said? The story of 1 Kings chapter 3, Solomon gave God a thousand animals. So, to kill one to ten is a lot. One, two, three, four, ten, fifteen, twenty-five, thirty-five, forty-five. The Bible says God did not send the angel. God came. Oh God, what do you want? What do you want? This one you have done. People don't do this. What are you looking for? The Bible says God came at night. What do you want? What are you looking for that you went this extra? When you go for extra for God, God goes extra for you. Is that you listen to what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. Listen up. When you go extra for God, God goes extra for you. Look, even as human beings, when people do extra for us, we look forward to doing extra for them. Am I, am I correct, please? And will we be more just than our God? No. God will beat, beat us to it. So when you give to God, don't be surprised why God favors you. Now listen to me. What you do with the favor is a different thing. But God will give you a platform. Please, are you listening to what I'm saying here this morning? Now look at what it says. It says, and now, because of that scripture, that it says that, what did he say earlier on in verse 7? It says that, um, for God loves a cheerful giver. All right? It now says, and now because of that, God is able to make all grace. Remember we explained this grace to be favor. Last week, every favor and earthly blessing are bound towards you so that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. When God favors you, he's favoring you for a good work. When God favors you, he favors you for a good work. And I said, when God, you give to God, usually, and I'm saying this not necessarily from scriptures, but from my study, I notice that those that give to God, God makes them financiers of the gospel. People that money can work in their hands because God can trust money in their hands. So when you want to enter another realm of finances, let it be known today that God will reward you accordingly. It's something you have to step into. Don't be thinking they are playing you every time. You are a child of God. You should know when God's spirit is talking to you. Your generosity in God helps you experience a dimension of favor that is not open to all. Are you listening to what I'm saying? For example, service in God's house also. When you serve in God's house, God seems to favor you differently. How do I say so? Exodus chapter 23 verse 25 to 20. It says that, it says that um, <clears throat> and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and he shall take sickness away from the midst of thee, and the number of your days you shall fulfill. It says, and there shall be none barren in your land. Exodus 23, 25 to 26. So it says, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away. So you see that you are living a sick-free life. Sick-free life. You are not having to spend money on, on, on sickness. Please, do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. That's favor. God is favoring you. He says, there shall nothing cast your young. You will never be carry a miscarriage, nor be barren in the land. The number of your days you will fulfill. Look at it. That is favor, sir. That is favor. And that is because of service. You shall serve the Lord your God. Look at what he says again in Job 36, 11. So when you come to God's house, you are serving God, you came for workers' meeting, look at what God is saying. He says in Job 36, 11, quickly please if you can, Job 36, 11, please hurry up, I want to wrap up shortly. Job 36, 11. Ah. He says there, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Did you see that? It's not the blessing for all. These are favored blessings. When you obey and serve him, your mates are serving God. You are serving yourself. Find it in your heart to serve God. It says you shall spend your days in prosperity. Shall. I like the word shall. You will spend your days in prosperity. Who am I talking to this morning? It says you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. Service to God. Service to God. Now finally, I want to show you how favor comes through transfer. 
in the book of Luke chapter 1, in the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 30, I'll close with this now. I hope you are blessed well, from this teaching, man. And please open First Samuel down, verse 16 and 13. Chapter 16 and verse 13. Let's look at it. In Luke 1, 26, we're going down to verse 30. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God. Let me just say this to you. Angels are available to us today. Can I hear your amen on that? If you have any dream that you don't like, all right, that you had a dream that was not right, wake up and cancel that dream by the blood of the Lamb. If you have anything you forgot and you don't know how to reach, send your angels to help you protect it or get it. Don't keep quiet on the promptings of God on things that you need to get to that you cannot get there physically. Angels are given to us to help us when we're in trouble. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So learn to use your angels right. For example, what you say is angels, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I demand of you, go and keep my children in Uyo and in Abelkota. Deliver them from evil. Make them not suffer any loss. Make sure they are guarded from the evil of day and the arrows by night. You speak according to the word of the Lord. If you forgot something in the office or at home or in a bus, insist your angels, disturb the heart of those concerned there to make sure that that thing is protected for you. Use your angels wisely. That's just side gist, okay? Now look at what it says. And says, well, angel, names Nazareth. Let's go on verse. We're going down to 30, please. Quickly. I just didn't want to forget to say that. All right. Oh, you are ready to move on now. 27 next, please. Yeah, I think it's hanging. Let me try to call it up here if it's my phone here. I really want us to be fast about this. Um, okay, is it up? Okay, let's go. Please help me keep it up, Abe. Eh? Thank you. Let's go. Verse 27. Let's go. One, two, go. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Please follow this story. It's, very, it's what I want to use to lead on. It says, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. There's such a thing called high favor. High favor. When God chooses to like you, when God chooses to help you, it's not low favor. It is high favor. I see somebody enter into high favor today in Jesus' name. I said, I see somebody enter into high favor today in Jesus' name. He said, and the angel came in unto her and said, and when she, was, she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. What is going on here? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Somebody say, I have found favor with God. Say it again. Say, I have found favor with God. So this describes that there's such a thing called favor with God. God selects you. She was a virgin. She was a decent girl going to get married. God says, I will favor you. You know that you can also get favor from marriage. Very powerful story there. Let's go that in verse 31. Please, let's read on. Let's read on. So you, you can skip. It says, and now skip. Go down. I want to save some time. Shall call him his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Let's read on. Go on, go on. And he shall reign. Go to 36. 36 there about. And, uh-huh. Okay. Oh, okay. Now go on to the next verse. 37. But with God nothing shall be impossible. And look at verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. That is, I'm available to it. Alright? I'm available. I'm available. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. That's not what I was looking for. Where is that verse that says that, uh, how shall these things be? Is it 30? What verse is that? Is it 20? What is that? I say, how shall these things be? Help me search that scripture. That she asked the angel. I thought it was 36, 38. Is it there? 34. All right, let's go to 34. Thank you. Oh, bring it up. Bring it up, sweetheart. Aha. He shall be great and shall be called the son of his father, David, verse 33. Okay. 
Then said Miriam to the angel, hey, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? That's where I'm going to. And 35, look at what it says in 35. 35, the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Please, did you see that? Please listen up. Please listen up. This is where I want to close with it. There are things that God may have told you by prophecy. And you are wondering how will 77,000 be? Today you are going to receive the oil of gladness upon your head. And it's not just for nothing. And prophecy tells you that you are going to be the richest in your family in the next 27 years. Prophecy tells you that what you could not buy before for 2 million, you will buy for 20 million conveniently. Prophecy tells you that God is going to expand your coast and do stuff for you. But you are asking like Mary asked, how shall this thing be? And the Lord is answering you this morning, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also, the only thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now look up one minute. This scripture tells us there are some things that can only happen when the Holy Ghost comes upon us. The way your business will break through, the Holy Ghost is the reason. The way things will change for you from this meeting, it will be clear is the Holy Ghost. Now in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13, and I close with that, it says that, and Samuel poured the oil upon David. And the Holy Spirit came upon him. Look at it. Luke chapter, um, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. Oh, glory to God. Glory. Take a look at it. Please listen. You know, some of us, I'm just trusting God for you that this teaching will be something you can refer to. It's the last one for the month of favor. Next Sunday is a new month. So listen well as we wrap up. Look how it says. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord, it was oil they poured, but it was the spirit of the Lord that came. Are you see what I'm saying? When oil comes upon your head today, it is oil I'm pouring, but it is the spirit of the Lord coming. Please, did you hear what it says there? Samuel took what? Horn of oil, like anointing oil, bottle of oil. Thank you, man. And anointed him in the midst of everybody. It's not secret cult. It's everybody will see it. And he says, and though he poured oil, it was the spirit of the Lord that came. Please, do you see what I'm saying there? And from that day forward, from that day forward, from today forward, what you will have is the spirit of the Lord. Oh, I thought I would hear a better amen there. So though we received oil, it is spirits coming upon our lives. I want to pray for us this morning. You have your oil? Bring it out. You have your instruments? Bring it out. When we come up for Thanksgiving, I would, you know, pour oil on your head and please hold your bottle. I'll put it on your hand. You can do whatever you want to do with it from your hand. I'm not going to put it on your head. Mm -mm. I will put it on your head. You and your hand because there's an oil that comes upon the head and there's the oil that comes upon the hand i would do likewise and by faith i want you to trust god that from today forward the spirit of the lord will come upon you i will not directly put it on your instruments of work but i will pray over that instrument of work is that okay please i want to please understand what i'm about to do before i do it so that you understand what to do when i do it when I finish that, that is the generic. I want you to come back to the specific and then be intentional. Please, are you listening to what I'm saying here? Be intentional to prophesy what you want to do, what you want God to do for you in this specific. Please, don't limit God in this anointing service. Don't think God will only buy you one car. Pastor Deboe said that he trusted God for a three-bedroom flat. And God told him, I will not give you a flat. God said, I will give you an estate. God is not thinking small. Don't limit him to small. Please trust God in this service. 
There might be situations in your life from your background that you need God's favor to change and correct for you. Please, I beg you, don't waste this service. As we are praying, put your mind inside. Is that okay, please? Let your faith look to God so that we can say, Blessed that thou among women, or blessed that thou among men. Can you rise to your feet?